Heard again in the centre square. Somerville, Masidi. Heard, who needs to get a lot of touches, you think, for Essendon to win. Sanderson. Quick kick by Simpson. Danaher, who was on the interchange in the third term, swings it out to Harvey. It was a good handball. Harvey away from half back to centre half. What a corner. Big leap. Good mark in the front spot. They needed a positive start, Essendon. They trailed by 15 points late in the third quarter. Got it back to nine. And need the opening goal. He was all right, Danaher, too, in the opening half, wasn't he, with a couple of goals? Yeah, he's been a pretty good player. But this was always going to hurt them. Ryan O'Connor had to expose his opponent eventually for height. And Sanderson uh, just a little bit too far behind that time. Kicks from him just outside 50. He's hooked it and missed. Going for that little bit extra distance. And if someone's going to miss from a long way out, nine times out of ten is with a little hook trying that extra. There's Sean Wellman. 15-7, 16-9. So the opening goal still to be got in this final term. Sanderson to bring the ball back in. See the zone setups there. Sanderson trying to find a hole in. Now it's forced to go long. In front of the great southern stand. Heard. Almost. Barnes knocks it on to Hocking. Great pickup in the conditions. Brewer, it's actually Barnes wants him. Kicks out wide to Hall. Knew the player was there, just felt couch. Great awareness. Kicks in the Brownless. Fletcher puts him underneath it. And O'Donnell gives it off to Doolan. And Doolan goes back to the middle of the ground and finds McCurry. Trying to draw the player. Great chase from behind. Almost caught. Players are again. O'Connor stands tall right on the 50 metre line. Wants to play on the denim. Runs into trouble. Gone. And holding the ball is awarded to Grant Tanner from the back of the square. And he gives it off to Hocking. Hocking's kick first class to Sanderson at centre wing. McGrath. Neat. Scholl. So a steady build up by Geelong. Hall running for Scholl if he wants him. Comes in board. Minch. Bombs away a bit, but Dog gives uh, Barnes every opportunity. It took forever to get there, but he was always the only man in the box seat. Minch finding another tall in Barnes. And it may just prove to be a big plus that Minch has come onto the ground, a tallish player with fresh legs, because the other guys have been uh, really having a hard slog up and down the ground. They've done a fair bit of running. Barnes has been in the forward line a fair bit tonight. This to a pinch a very handy break from 45 metres out as a goal. Couch gets a quick kick out the middle. Under pressure is Harvey from the tackle from Brownless and manages to wobble it towards the boundary line. Doolan wants to try and keep it in or show the umpire that he's tried to do that. And the Cats by 14 points. And the important first goal of the last quarter. As we see Michael Tuck, Peter McKenna behind him, Kelvin Moore and Jack Clark. Great players. Tap over the back to Burns. In underneath most players. And Denham and G. Hocking want the football. Once again, it was Paul Couch that got the ball out of the centre. I'd like to know how many goals Essendon have kicked tonight with Couch on the ground. Barnes. Brewer trying to work his magic through the pack. But held up, and another bounce will result. Some of all coming off the ground for Lucas. So David Howlett puts it down. Harvey really under trouble. Brewer, left foot snap. Oh, don't tell me. <laughs> hit the post. It has been one of those nights. <laughs> so Shane Brewer with a quick snap and the margin as Barry Stoneham looks on quite inquisitively. 17-10 to 15-7, so it's a 15-point margin. Fletcher in a bit of strife, but back to Mercedes. Mercedes goes to centre wing. Simons had a lot of it not paid. Pickering with him. Simons and Burns have got numbers, Essendon, but they can't do anything constructive with it. Harvey forced to go to the line and out of play. 
Well, Kevin Sheedy knows the uh, consequences better than uh, any of us. A loss tonight would be very damaging. Essendon hasn't won since they beat West Coast in round three. Come on, uh, three matches going in without a win. Hocking on the up. Fraser's quick kick back. Simons. Well done, Lucas to Shepard. Simons short. Didn't quite get to O'Connor. Back to Simons. Mercury off the ground. Free kick coming back to Essendon. Simons has got it at centre wing. He'll probably give off. He does. Here's Pryor. Normally a good kick. Wide. Cockatoo Collins has hardly had a touch. Got one there, but couldn't hold the mark. Cold it too easily away to the space and kicked it superbly to run it to the boundary line and out of play. And Ryan O'Connor has... Well, let's have a look at this uh, bit of body work here. Colbert just a little bit too strong and too tall. Ryan O'Connor, a new opponent now, Derek Hall, who uh, plays a bit taller than Brenton Sanderson. So Barnes really killing him for this ruck work, but this is his opponent in Harvey. Down to O'Donnell. Has to kick onto his right foot. Over the back to O'Connor, solidly met by Brewer, falls to Pryor. No, Pryor from 65 metres out, kicks over the back, Buick, certain goal. Oh, the Bombers are back in this. Scotty's fifth there and Buick. Well, they won't be denied, nine-point margin, the same at uh, three-quarter time, and five goals, pretty handy effort. It was a classic Darren Buick goal. He led his play to the ball. He jumped and went for it. Buick stayed on the ground. Michael Mansfield doesn't often miss those. <laughs> Buick just walked in for an easy one. Seventeen, ten, sixteen, seven. Buick five goals in his first match of the season. His 150th game. Free kick Geelong. Hocking doing well, particularly in the second half. Riccardi running away. Out wide to half forward. A bit of a blaze. Burns, always a danger. Doolan with him. Doolan forcing to the line out of play. Uh, our statisticians worked out the uh, answer to your puzzle, uh, Jared. Seven goals were kicked by Essendon with Couch off the ground. And it uh, was a time where Essendon were on top. Uh, the boundary throw in. Barnes laid it down. Couch again tried to get to the kick away. Tudor. Simpson, they just conceded, Mercedes tried, Mercury very well done, Pryor an important player, centering kick, this will be interesting, McGrath hard, Cummings, still Cummings, Sanderson, he's going to get a free kick, Cummings, hanging on, and he can kick this, I know he's a long way out and they're getting tired, but he could kick this. He has got four, that man's got five, so they've got nine between them from their key forwards. And this just in the finish ended up undisciplined play from uh, McGrath. He just had to sweat on him rather than losing his cool and giving the free kick away. Cummings going for goal number five. Kicks from about 55 metres out. He's hooked like O'Connor did and a behind. So 4-2 to Cummings tonight. Essendon 16-8, Geelong 17-10. Most of the goals have been kicked to left of screen this evening. Wellman and Somerville. Remember that Michael Long was taken from the ground on a stretcher. Tanner got it short from uh, Sanderson. And he goes short also to Hall. So they've worked at getting close to the 15-metre line. Now he wants Minch. And so the zone play works pretty well. And the chip also to Pickering. Once again, Short and Colbert. Mansfield has to run now. Enormous pressure. Fraser has Denham inside. Now we go back with the chips to O'Connor. He's in trouble now. McCarty's got him. Great turnover here for the Cats. Kicks the ball forward. Grenville has to sit and wait. Taps it back in the Donald O'Donnell direction. Has Simons out wide. And once again... So about 10 or 12 possessions there, and we really haven't got anywhere just between half forward and half back. Denham now plays on. Cockatoo Collins. Great fist from Sanderson. Terrific handball from Hurd. Cockatoo Collins is from space. So is McCurry. And McCurry accepts it some 45 metres from goal. Will kick from just inside 50. 
So a lot of short passing there, Jared. A lot of players just getting free from that kick out. Well, we saw Geelong uh, possession football taking it out of defence, and it does work if the kicks are uh, spot on. But Essendon replying in kind. And McCurry has kicked to the goal kicking Darren Buick. Five goals straight. Three in the second, one in the third, and one in the fourth. Would you consider this a percentage kick, Malcolm? <laughs> no. Didn't Buick work all brilliantly there? It was a great mark in the end. Yeah, great adjustment. And good players do it, don't they? Now, on a very tight angle. Kicks. Oh, the goal umpire hasn't moved again, so the Bombers are now within three points of the Cats. to two points, Buick with six goals tonight, Colbert out of the centre Geelong in front, Brownless in the front spot, Burns, this is where he can be very dangerous, Doolan just got rid of him Burns to chase, Doolan kept his head, found O'Donnell getting a few touches in the match now Essendon trading by two points they led at half time by 11 they haven't won a last quarter, a last half I should say all season, Harvey good kick to Pryor, who's had a very big last quarter. Lucas asking to get it on. Pryor's kick finds him now. Lucas at centre wing. Pryor in board. Gets to him. Denham's in board if he wants him. O'Connor leads now. Pryor goes longer. Heard the target. Sanderson, good effort. Front spot. It's a lovely stretch. Simpson was with the herd and took a very good mark. The give off. Hocking. On the left, under a bit of pressure in the end. The kick to centre wing, Brewer, good job, brought it down. Riccardi slung it away, got some uh, distance. Tudor, it came off, Couch, it ricocheted off Tanner. Forced forward by Fraser, in the direction of McCurry to O'Connor. O'Connor bustles towards goal. A free kick to Buick, definitely. Once again, I think it's like playing Russian roulette if a defender has an arm over the shoulder and then drags him back. Do you know the forward's going to fall back and help the umpire make his decision? What a remarkable comeback this is. Seven goals from Darren Buick. And let's not forget, he went from the ground after he kicked three and I don't think any of us expected him to go back. Yet he's come back, he went from the ground, he looked to be injured got strapped up, came back and he's kicked another four and the Bombers are back in front. Well, this is uh, starting to reach Peter Hudson proportions when he came back after missing a season. I think he kicked about, well, it might have been eight to half time. One of the great differences, of course, was that Darren Buick drove here. Hutto turned up in a helicopter. And this amazing reenactment match continues. Minch, backhand is out the centre. And a free kick will go back to that player being tackled after he gave it a belt. So Geelong need to react. A lot of players all move forward now. Very few on the Essendon forward line. Punch from behind from Fraser. Fletcher does well to knock a few out the way. Denham works hard. And that is a very aggressive attack from G. Hocking again. And a free kick will go to Sean Denham. Quickly off Pryor, this wonderful kicking youngster. Heard. Putting in the deep ones. Now chips. Back over the head to Buick. The danger man gets around his opponent. Now he gets out. Gets out of the pocket. Kicks. And he's kicked his eighth. Oh, the Buick's on fire. Jared Healy picked yourself off the floor, Malcolm. What a great goal that was from Darren Buick. And Peter Hudson did kick eight goals in his comeback after a serious knee injury. And Darren Buick is really, uh, well, he's the difference right at the moment between the Essendon that have got a finals chance and the Essendon that haven't. What a magical goal. Great reaction. 
Look at that, Buick with eight goals. A sensational last quarter. The Bombers are charging home. Heard out of the centre, 198 to 1710. A mighty roar from this huge crowd here tonight. McCurry's little handball off. Masidi, Essendon with their tails up. Danaher finessing, kicks to centre half forward. Lucas, Sanderson tries to take another very good mark. O'Connor puts the tackle on him. Hawking's in there hard. And I was just reflecting for a moment. You've talked about Peter Hudson kicking eight and his comeback game and arriving by a helicopter. What a lair you'd be tonight as we've celebrated 100 years to arrive here in a helicopter tonight when we've been coming in penny farthings in the Covent Co. That would be a standout. Minch, Couch. Back in the world, centre half forward, chewed it a row. The ball ran away from him. Denham's kick was terrific. Denaher running sideways. Clever. Mercedes could kick this. 50 out. Measures it. Drills it. Goals. Sensational. You can see him thinking, measuring the distance, balancing, and going bang through. What was Essendon's, here. He was Essendon's best player in the third quarter, Joe Vecini. This was smart play, wasn't it, from Chris Danaher? He could have also blazed away, but he just ran his yards, even his metres, found Joe who kicked the goal. Unbelievably, the Bombers have kicked the last five goals of this quarter after Geelong had got the first and pushed their lead out to 15-odd points. Seven minutes too. Five goals in seven minutes. Amazing. Grant Tanner now playing on Buick. For the bounce. Back in the centre. 14 points they lead by. Amazing. Simons has to wait and then pushed in the back from behind. And Derek Hall gives away the free kick. Why wouldn't you just go and kick it near Buick somewhere, son? Four last quarter goals in a sensational performance. Kicks it high. Buick runs to the front of the pack and it goes at the behind. That's where Tanner is. Cockatoo Collins. Oh, set goal. Another one for the Bombers. Six in seven and a half minutes. 20 point leaders in what has been a remarkable turnaround from the start of this last quarter. last week, 10 more shots than the Swans and couldn't win Danaher to centre half forward Simons Sanderson Cockatoo Collins Tanner all over him 12-18 they kicked last week Essendon at the Sydney Cricket Ground 21-8 tonight they look home but it's been one of those matches. Maybe don't count Geelong out. They need somebody to provide some inspiration. Heard, O'Connor. It's a miss. Oh, disappointing. Anticlimactic. 21-9 to 17-10. He hasn't kicked any goals, O'Connor, but he's been pretty important in this last quarter. And Sanderson to bring her back in. And the Cats need a miracle, you'd think. What was that margin in the opening time? They played one another 100 years ago. 23 points. 24 points. Here we go. It was 23, 23, 23, and that's what the margin is Sorry. right now. Yeah. That's what they kicked four goals, yes. Up the Brownless, can't get a hold of it. Danaher. Oh, he's done this a few times, brilliantly. Just very cool with the footy. Harvey, constructive into Lucas. Can't control it. Now he's going to run himself out of trouble. Oh, really loose is everywhere. O'Connor. Yes, that's right. They kicked 3 6 to one left. 24. O'Connor goes the big torque and wobbles off the side. Heard. Falls to Cockatoo Collins and he unfortunately is missed. Well, from somewhere Geelong have got to find a runner there across the board looking flat and despondent. There is still over five minutes to play in this game of football. And goals have come in a hurry, Jared, all night for both teams so it's not impossible but uh, 
Where's it going to come from? Barnes paid at centre half back. Maybe just a lucky break or two could build into something very positive. The game deserves a close finish. It has been a cracking match. Barnes to centre half forward. Not quite there actually. King gets a free. Was forced underneath. So a couple of free kicks to Geelong. One a paid mark. The 17 year old. The youngest player out there. On his third game. Attacks to fall forward. Mansfield worked underneath. High fly by Simons. Brownless tries to get it to Tanner. Tanner tracked it. Well done to Brownless. Goes back, a long way back. Mansfield wanted to go on. Simons hasn't moved. Yes, Simons. Hit the ground very awkwardly. Let's hope he's okay. The, uh, the call for a stretcher. Allowed to play on Mansfield. Riccardi. Essendon wanting a stretcher out there for the second time tonight. Yeah. Let's have a look at the replay here and see just how hard Simon's uh, hit the ground. A big flyer as he's always been. He's completely fearless. Bang. Oh. It looked awful, didn't it? Uh, this is uh, serious stuff here with uh, him just having his airways opened up to make sure that he's, the air is getting down into the lungs. Poor boy. Gee. A lot of care being taken here as uh, Michael's being placed on Stretcher Simons, the fly, and we can just see how hard again from that uh, wider angle. And uh, as Michael Long was earlier tonight, taken straight across the ground away from the interchange area and into the club rooms. I think he just lifted his head there too, Bruce. Mm. Just as, uh, which I hope that's the case. So, um, Simon's coming from the ground after that um, high fly and a shocking fall. And with it, probably Geelong's chances. And behind to Riccardi, official attendance tonight, 75,632. So it's a great crowd, a wonderful uh, attendance. O'Donnell at uh, the back pocket, so the scores, 21-10 Essendon, Geelong 17-11. And we're back to that 23 points, Bruce, that you mentioned earlier. Thinking of the centenary test here with that uh, same yes. margin. Amazing. And, uh, of course, that year, Essendon actually won the Premiership, uh, although Geelong finished minor premiers in 1897. Worked under the ball. Mitch back onto it. O'Connor. Sanderson there to help. Oh, he's caught high. Now, that was a slip. Accidental. Very accidental. But accidents do count in this game. And he has players back in the middle of <laughs> the Gets rid of the umpire. And has a bounce. Now tips the ball to Pickering. Go right in the centre square. Pickering off to McKinnon. Flyers wanted. Can't get hold of it. Lucas. And they share the ball, Bombers, and run it about out of defence. Dolan looking for Harvey. Good attack from the back by uh, Tanner. Comes back from Dolan to Mercedes. Big second half, Mercedes. Buick's got it. What a remarkable match. Eight goals to Buick. Three in the second, one in the third. Four goals in this final term. I think if you had a dream last night, Darren Buick, it wouldn't be that this would have happened. But he injured himself severely in round 11 last year against Geelong. Didn't play for the rest of the year. Had a knee reconstruction. Has been in the reserves for three weeks coming back. Played his 150th match on one of the biggest stages the AFL could create in 100 years before 75,000 people. And he's going for his ninth goal. His fifth goal in the last quarter. What a night for him. It's a fairy tale come true. It's everything a footballer could wish for in one night. 22-10 to 17-11. And Benny Doolan just uh, bursting from defence, setting them up once again. 
just read it best. It's his night tonight, Darren Buick. He didn't get this perfectly, but he'd be happy with the result. No crumbs once again for Geelong. The remarkable Darren Buick. Didn't get a goal in the first quarter. But my word, they've come in a hurry since, including five in a magnificent last quarter effort. And a free kick going down the ground here to the Bombers, and Mark Fraser will take it. Have we got a magical 10 on offer? It's just got under two minutes. I'm sure the Geelong people wouldn't like to see that, but uh, a lot of Essendon land would. Lucas worked through the traffic beautifully. Chip, could have chipped the Buick, but went long, and has kicked it behind. So the youngster who just fumbled a little bit early and slipped over, has got a couple of nice touches towards the end of the game. Shoal to bring it in. And Gary Ayres is uh, in new territory tonight. First time as a coach at Geelong, he's lost, uh, well, his team has lost two matches in a row. They didn't do it for the whole of last year in that remarkably consistent burst they had. McKinnon. And they come back to the field after tonight a bit, don't they? Four and three. Kilpatrick, a floater to half forward. Brownless, nice tape. Can balance and kick a goal, Billy, from 50 metres out. Won't quite get there. Good fly from Mansfield at the back. And through from behind. Brownless, five goals. And what about Michael Simons, Dipper? Yes, Bruce. Uh, as we saw, he was knocked out, Bruce, and uh, he's still in the rooms, and the doctors are still in there. OK, you've uh, caught up with the trainers as they came back. Thanks, Dipper. So for the Bombers, bittersweet in a way with Long and, uh, and Simons. But an important victory for them. They get a big monkey off their back tonight and they can go forward for the rest of this season. And all of a sudden, Geelong has had two fade-outs in the last quarter. Dolan. Wide to centre wing. Lucas is there. Good mark. Doesn't this do a lot for him too? At 18 years of age, to be involved in a victory like this on a night like tonight. Yeah, he's got touches too, like just a couple of nice ones. Centre wing, O'Connor, Harvey, but out to Hurd, who we thought would have to have a huge last quarter for Essendon to win, but we didn't count on Buick kicking five. In fact, Essendon play Footscray next week, and Geelong play Carlton. That tightens things a bit, doesn't it? So Connor a long way from home, and they don't have fond memories of Carlton, do they, after last year's grand final? But they do have Gary Ablett back in the side, and probably uh, Barry Stoneham. They're handy. Makes a difference. Thanks for that, Jared. I, I did forget for a moment. A kick by O'Connor. Fly by Barnes. I mean, shouldn't forget his contribution in this match. It has been very good, but the whole Geelong team seems to have faded. As Sanderson brings the ball back to centre wing. And just as they did, 100 years ago, they won again.